I'm still so inspired by this whole movement. I think it's such a great way to get kids physically active and socially engaged with one another. I'm hoping to have one of our own bike buses for one of our own schools and kids. I'm a mother, an avid cyclist, and I'm very interested in safety for kids and having them be safe on the streets on bikes and active, and that's why I'm here. Welcome to Transportation Alternatives Vision Zero Cities Conference. Today we are going to be doing a bike tour and how to start a bike bus event. I'm Sam Balto, I'm a physical education teacher in Portland, Oregon, and I lead the Alameda Bike Bus. My name is Megan Ramey, I live in Hood River, Oregon, I'm the Safe Routes to School Manager, and I started the first ever bike train for our school in October 2020. My name is Emily Stutz, I'm a special education teacher here in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm involved with the Bergen Bike Bus. When I say bike, you say bus! Bike! Bike! Alright, I want to thank everybody for being here today. This is absolutely incredible. We're gonna do some amazing things, riding bikes as a community. You know, we've had some bike buses in San Francisco that have been really successful. Um, and we've gotten more children and families biking to school, um, which obviously reduces car traffic, but also makes people healthier, makes the planet better. So I'm um, really excited to meet other bike bus leaders and talk about growing this movement. Um, it means the world to me to, to meet my co-conspirators in crime. The bike bus movement is, is simply just getting um, kids in the street to experience it because they never get to um, and also show the general public that they have a space too. I was actually inspired by Megan Ramey when she was on a podcast. We were listening to it in my house and um, I was really just struck by that initiative and wanted to bring that joy to my school as well. So we started in May of 2022 with our first bike to school day and uh, kind of grew and expanded to and allow other schools to join that route along Bergen Street. Well, I had seen videos of other bike buses in Hood River, Barcelona, and San Francisco, and it looked like a great way to get kids physically active, build community, and just have a great time. So we did our first bike bus in the spring of 2022, a uh, bike bus for Earth Day, and it was a huge success. We had 75 students, and ever since then we've been doing it every Wednesday, rain or shine. The sense of joy that we feel as adults when we're riding a bike, our students need to be able to feel that as well. And unfortunately, in my community of Boston, I'm really, really working hard to make sure that folks know how joyful it is to ride a bicycle and that we get past how scary and unsafe it is, right? How important is music as part of the experience of the bike bus? Music's critical. It makes it joyful. It keeps everybody together. The more people that ride, they got more safety in numbers. It's about the kids, so you got to make it fun. You got to have the music. It's safety because we're visible, we're audible, but it's also just joy. All right. One of the first street films I saw when I was looking for resources on how to rapidly change culture was uh, Neighborhood Greenway about Portland, but Kyle Johnson was interviewed in it, and he started the bike train movement in America in 2010, and I was like, okay, that's a no-brainer, that's, that's what I'm stealing. Twelve years later, we're kind of reinvigorating it. I got a little credit! <laughs> no, you did! I did! You, you did, totally! Did the police help, hurt, or indifferent? Uh, I'd say if you want the police, you know, invite them to come. I don't think it hurts. We did, uh, in Boston, we had police doing walking school buses with us, and that was really great. People just want to know how to try it out, you know, how to start a bike bus. I tell them to, you know, start small, even if it's a couple blocks, you know, share the map with your community share it and be consistent. It's never gonna be just a one-time thing. Once you experience that joy, once the kids experience that joy and freedom, they're gonna want more. Um, and one of the things that helps the bike bus be successful is being consistent. 
because it builds visibility, um, it builds that joy and skill in riding a bike. How do you manage growth, Emily? Our lines get longer and longer. We really rely on the support of the volunteers, uh, which is unfortunate because ideally the streets would be prepared for that kind of capacity. Ladies and gentlemen, a school street. Take it away. All right, thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome. Welcome to Rapalai Street. In 2020, when schools reopened in the fall, schools were allowed to apply to have nearby residential streets to close to traffic for extended outdoor learning space. We were always trying to figure out like, how can we make this work? How can we fold bike riding into our teaching and learning program? And our now retired principal that year during recess started a learn to bike program. So we would have some kids playing in the yard, some playing in the ball field, and some kids riding on the street. So what does it take to maintain the school street? Uh, a lot of collaboration, uh, communication, filling out forms each year to re-request the permit and trying our best to work with our neighbors. Bye, bus, bye, bus, bye, bus, bye, bus. Hey, look who we ran to in the middle of a bike bus. Way to go, look at that. It's like a commercial. Active transportation is this untapped uh, opportunity that our communities have, especially school communities. And uh, the bike bus has just been really amazing getting to share the videos. The people go crazy for them. Uh, have a video that's approaching 15 million views on TikTok. I currently have over 180,000 followers, and it just shows the excitement people have for active transportation. Part of my PE curriculum in the schools, I take the fifth graders on a ride during the school day around the neighborhood, and um, the 60% Latino school, um, the kids were riding behind me, and it's like this combination, you hear the chatter in the background of like, we're free, it's freedom, or viva la America, and I'm like, did he? really just say that is so amazing. Most of them just wish that we had it every day, you know? Um, one of the kids at the bike rack at my school yesterday said, um, I wish we could have this three times a week. And then he realized, like, why tamp it down? He said, wait a minute, I wish we could have this every day. And then just seeing the really little kids grow in their skill set. Um, one particular pre-K kid last year almost was like the spokes child of the bike bus because she was just so little compared to these giant cars she's riding in the same street with. And to see her grow in her skill and confidence over time, and now as a kindergartner, she just like owns the street. 